Attorney and legal analyst Patrick Cafferty, who's been joining us every morning this week. And Patrick, good morning. I'd like to start by looking ahead to this Friday as we head into the weekend. With the jury not sequestered and going into the weekend, not working the weekend, where do the defense and prosecution have to leave things with jurors today? As far as the state is concerned, they're going to have more control over where they leave this with jurors this afternoon than the defense does. So obviously we're at a stage in the case where the state is calling witnesses and they they have the right to call who it is they'd like. Uh, the defense is just sort of stuck with the decisions that the state is making. So as far as yesterday's testimony is concerned, uh, the defense is probably feeling pretty good about some of the information that came forward through witnesses. And they're gonna try to parlay that into more of that information today. Basically, what they're saying is uh, they're, they're, they're trying to draw more support for their theory that Rittenhouse had no choice but to do what he did. And you mentioned some of that information that came forward about the claim of witnesses that uh, Rosenbaum had grabbed for Rittenhouse's gun. And there was also information that came out about someone else who was about 100 feet away who shot a warning shot in the air shortly before Rittenhouse shot. So... The defense is going to continue to highlight that information about self-defense, and obviously the state is going to try to uh, dissuade the jury from believing that that's the case. I was curious about that as well, Patrick, because this is right now the state's case. The prosecutors are presenting their evidence. They're the ones calling these witnesses. And as you indicated, you know, some of these witnesses are appearing to at least help bolster the argument of self-defense. So what is the state to do? I guess they need these witnesses to lay out the timeline, but also there's some exposure there for the case they're trying to make. Vince, that's a great observation. So we call uh, the, t the two types of questioning direct examination and um, cross-examination. So the, the defense is engaged in cross-examination. When you cross-examine a witness, it's easier to control the information that's gonna come from them. When you do a direct examination of a witness, they're more open-ended questions. And when you ask open-ended questions, there is risk that the witness is gonna answer in a way that brings in information that is not necessarily helpful to your case. And we saw evidence of that yesterday. Uh, as you indicate, the state is required to lay out the timeline. They're, they're required to lay out certain things that happened. And they have to call these witnesses who were very close to Rittenhouse when the incident occurred. With that, though, comes other information that's going to be helpful to the defense. And frankly, the, the defense did a very good job yesterday of highlighting some of that information that was coming from the government's witnesses. The other issue is, if you can bring out information from the other side's witnesses, jurors tend to believe it more because there's more credibility to it. The jurors think, well, the defense didn't even call this guy as a witness, yet this information came forward from him. Therefore, it must be more reliable. Patrick Cafferty, a local defense attorney and been serving as our legal analyst this week. Week one in the books. Patrick, appreciate it very much. We'll talk with you again next week. Thanks. Have a great day. All right, our partners at Court TV are carrying the Kyle Rittenhouse trial live. You can find it over the air on Channel 4.3. Some parents in Milwaukee 